old John. This is your mother. Now listen to this. Once upon a time, there was a wily wolf. That's me. A wicked witch. And a ginormous giant. These three villains earned their reputation in a selection of folk tales set in the dark woods, deep lakes, and enchanted castles. In this story, our villains are the wily wolf and the cunning fox. Long ago, a wolf and a fox lived in faraway Arabia. The wolf was called Ali Baba because his mother fed him on sheep. And the fox was called Cassim because his mother was an idiot. One day, the wolf saw a column of dust rising in the desert heat. Thinking it could be hunters after him, he hid as best as he could behind a cat. In fact, it was the 40 Thieves, a notorious gang from the local town. Open sesame, said their leader, as a huge stone rolled back and the 40 thieves made their way inside. Then the stone closed behind him. Hey, what's going on in there? Said the wolf as he crept up towards the cave, straining to see or hear a clue from inside. He didn't have long to wait as he heard a call from inside the cave. Open sesame. The huge stone rolled back. Oh, oh my tootsie. And then closed again. When it was safe, the wolf couldn't wait to command the cave to open for him. Open up in there, or I'll eat you all up. Open, says me. And finally, the stone rolled open, and there before his eyes was everything that a wolf had dreamt of. Not gold, or silver, or second-hand video recorders, but a larder of meat hanging out from the cool walls of the cave. Sell by 1967 to the EEC. And gathering up as much as he could carry, he commanded the door to reopen. Open, says me. And he made his way home. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell meat. Oh, yummy, yummy, yum. Mother were rich, and there's plenty more where this came from. Who says the common agricultural policy is dead? I must as it weigh. Who cares what it weighs? The wolf's mother insisted on weighing the meat and sent the wolf to borrow some scales from Cassine the fox. An idiot who lived a short distance away. The fox was always suspicious when the wolf called around. Hey, lend me your scales. What is it now? Is it gold or silver? No, it's lovely, tender. It's mother. Uh, she's uh, making a cake. 
a very large kick. After the mother weighed all the meat, the wolf returned the scales to the fox, whose suspicion of foul play had reached fever pitch. Oh, I knew it. You's been stealing the meat. Now you's tell me where you's getting it, or I'll tell the forty thieves who's been stealing it. The wolf had no option but to tell the fox to go to the cave and then help himself to the meat. But the greedy wolf wasn't going to let the fox have it all his own way and conveniently forgot to tell him how to open the cave. He even followed the fox to see what happened. Open up! Oh, come on now! Fair play to you! But it was all in vain. And worse, the 40 villains had at that moment turned up at the cave to check on their dwindling supplies. Ah, uh, it wasn't me, fellas. I tell you now, but if I show you whose it was, will you let me go? The leader of the 40 thieves agreed, and the fox said he'd mark the door of the culprit with a chalk cross, and then the 40 thieves could come and deal with him later. So later that day, the crafty fox crept up on the wolf's cottage and marked a large white cross on the door. But the greedy wolf had his own plan. He set off towards the fox's house and checking that the coast was clear, he marked his door with a cross also. As the two of them went back to their homes, they ran into each other on the road. Ah, no then, where have you been? I just wanted to say goodbye. I mean, good night. How about you? Oh, same here. I couldn't stand the thought of not seeing you again. Till the morning, that is. Well, what it is to have true friends. Hey, we better move on before it rains. When the 40 thieves came later, they were surprised not to find any door marked with a cross, but not as surprised as the wolf and the fox when they met up on the road the next day. Oh, are I just bringing your mother some flowers? How about that? Me too. Well, what it is to have true friends. Oh, out fox again. The wolf and the fox never went to the cave again, preferring the safer surroundings of Mr. Jones the Butcher, an establishment they knew only too well. <laughs> <laughs>